In this video, we're looking at indefinite integrals. The AP standard for this says that this thing is an indefinite integral of the function f and can be expressed by this equals capital F of x plus c, where capital F prime of x is equal to the lower f of x and c is any constant. Integrals are basically an antiderivative, and we covered antiderivatives a few videos ago. This symbol here, that is what's called an integrand. That symbol just means to find the antiderivative of the function that comes after it. And then the dx at the end, that just means that you're finding the antiderivative with respect to x. Any time you see an integrand, you should have a dx at the end, or d with whatever variable that you're taking the antiderivative of. And what this stuff here is saying is that if you take the antiderivative of lowercase f, that gives you capital F. And that's defined such that the derivative of capital F gets you back to the lowercase f. This is just a way of saying that antiderivatives and derivatives are opposite processes of one another. If you take the antiderivative of a function and then find that function's derivative, you're going to end up right where you began. Another way to write an antiderivative uses a symbol called the integral. And integration is the process of finding an antiderivative. So the old way of finding antiderivatives, which you really only learned just a few days ago, you were given a function's derivative. Let's say f prime of x is equal to x squared, and you used antiderivatives to find f of x. The process for that uses the power rule for antiderivatives. So you take the exponent, add one to it, and then multiply times the reciprocal of that in front of the x. Then you have to add one to the exponent and then add a plus c at the end. The new way of doing this with integrals is going to get you to the same answer, but the way that you can write the question is a little bit more concise. In this case, we're just shown the integral of x squared dx. Remember that this symbol right here means integral. So we have the integral of x squared dx. That's just telling you to find the antiderivative of x squared. And the process of finding the antiderivative is the same as before. You want to use the power rule for antiderivatives. And that would give you one-third x cubed plus c. Here's another one. The old way of doing this, you'd be given f prime of x is equal to cosine of x. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. That means the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So f of x would equal sine of x. And then you have to add the constant term at the end, plus c. And to do this with integrals, you would just be given the integral of cosine of x dx, which is telling you to find the antiderivative of cosine of x. And the answer would be the same, sine of x plus c. I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating now. Remember that integrals or antiderivatives don't have all the same rules that derivatives had. For integrals, there is no product rule. There's also no quotient rule. There's not a chain rule, and there's no L'Hopital's rule. There is a simplified version of the chain rule, which we could call the reverse chain rule, but that only works for very special cases. When we get to the unit of U substitution, we'll learn how to undo some chain rule problems. Here's the power rule written with the integral symbol in it. If you have the integral of x raised to the nth power of d of x, just add one to the exponent, and then multiply the x with the reciprocal of that new exponent. So if the problem you were given said x squared, you would add 1 to the exponent to make it a 3, and then multiply the x out front with a 1 third. In the next video, I'll show you some examples of how to apply the power rule to find the integrals of a few different problems.